Hey everybody, welcome back to Heart Breathings. So this is probably the latest I've ever done the HB Notebook Challenge in the month, but I didn't miss it. So it is still the month of September, so I think it counts. It is time for our September Notebook Challenge, and I can't wait to show you guys what I have brought along with me. If you watched my previous video, you saw kind of everything that was in my stationary bag. But today we're going to focus on the notebooks that I brought with me. So let's get started. Okay. So as most of you know, if you've been following the channel for a while, I have moved into or transitioned into a more nomad type lifestyle for the foreseeable future, probably for six months or so. We do not know, but it's a long story. I will link the full story for you down below if you would like to watch that video. But basically me, my husband, our nine-year-old son, Andrew, and our two-year-old daughter, Evie, who just turned two um, a couple weeks ago, have embarked on a lifestyle where we are basically going to be traveling around for a while due to various reasons. And we're trying to find a place to call home, see where we want to settle down. We may end up back in the Charleston area if something comes through with that house we had originally contracted, but I'm pretty sure that's going to be it's just going to fall through, but they haven't given us a price yet, even still on what they're going to charge for the house that we had originally started building. But we have come down to Florida for the time being, and we will be in Florida until early November. And then after that, we're going to start heading west and we haven't fully decided on an itinerary, but we are basically living out of bags. And I have some notebooks, probably too many notebooks, but it all fits in the car. So as long as that is the case, we are all good. So I would say the most challenging part of this adventure and journey so far has just been not having my own space. So usually my planners and notebooks, I have found a really good system at my house of having this big Hudson cart, which is one of the larger rolling carts that come from Michael's, the bigger ones. And all of my planners and notebooks were lined up there. So at the end of the day, when I was finished with one, I could go and put it back in its place. But here I just have bags. And if I organize them, then I have to like pull three things out to get the notebook at the bottom and so on. So it has been a little bit difficult because we're in an Airbnb that currently has just this one table. And so we're eating at this table with a two-year-old which you know is messy, but we're also, Andrew's doing his homeschool here. I'm doing all of my live streams here. Like I did two hours of live stream this morning for the virtual writing retreat, have another live this afternoon uh, for my Sarah Cannon coffee chat. My husband is a computer programmer, so he's got his laptop here and we all have to kind of pile our laptops on top of each other and move them to the end of the table. And you know, some of the Airbnbs where we're staying later will have a dedicated workspace or desk that I can use since I'm, uh, work, you know, working basically a full-time job from Airbnb, but this one does not. And neither did our previous one. Um, we are currently in the St. Petersburg area. We were in Bradenton for two weeks and now we're in the St. Petersburg, um, Tampa Bay kind of area because I'm going to be speaking at a conference next week and that is going to be awesome. So, um, we will be here for a little bit longer and then we will move to a little bit more South Florida. So basically I'm trying to figure out I'm still trying to get my feet under me when it comes to using my stuff and making it work. But I will show you kind of what I've been using and what I've got so far. So these are my basic notebooks. So I have my evening routine notebooks, which you guys have seen quite a bit before. I had to bring this with me because I've been using it already. This is the second year and this is the Hobonichi five year and it's not exactly what you would call a notebook, but I sort of use it in that way. It's not exactly a planner either. It's just kind of like a memory keeping journal where you get to, you get just a little section of lines for five full years of your life. And then you do get a separate page. And I've heard people say that they, would just extend these lines and do it for another five years to make it a 10 year journal. So I've been considering potentially doing that or at the end, maybe going through and adding some photos or something like that. But I don't know. The main thing that I've been doing is just every single night I will go and put something in for the day. So 917, which is the day I'm recording this, I have last year's, but I don't have today. So I mark down the tarot reading that I did for the day. And then just a few little memories about what happened that day. So I've been keeping this with me and this doesn't go in my stationary bag. This goes in my tarot journal bag and this lives kind of beside the bed. 
Then I also have kept up with my evening routine, which includes not only the five-year journal, but also the tarot reading. So I've been using this Salty Katie Co. cover this year. It did come with a purple elastic, but I took it off because it was kind of annoying me. And this inside is a Hobonichi cousin. And I've been doing an amazing job, I think, so far. Almost every single day, if not every day, has been filled in. Yeah, actually, it's every single day. And I haven't missed any days. And this is really cool. So I use this yearly just at a glance to mark down which tarot deck I'm using, as well as what my nightly card was. Then I use the weekly spread to mark what was going on with the cards like what's the basic message and i keep this little thing here to mark it and then i also use the monthly spreads in here for like synchronicities and signs that i see in my life or for gratitude and then i use the daily pages for my tarot reads for like my full moon journal or just for some nightly journaling and you can see some days like on the 31st we were traveling and we had just left our house and started our journey. So we were at Jacksonville Beach for one night and I didn't get a chance to do anything, but I will come back to this later and maybe add a photo of our time at Jacksonville Beach and a little bit of journaling. But I don't always have a chance to go in and see like on the fourth, I didn't journal. I did draw a tarot card, but I didn't journal. So you will see kind of um, a few pages that haven't been used, but a lot of times if I have a page that didn't get used, I will go back and fill it in later with who knows what. So just kind of anything. So I do keep up with this pretty well. And overall, I feel like it's gotten pretty chunky. I was really wanting this journal or this notebook to be even bigger, like chunkier by the end of the year, but we'll see. We still have a few months left to go, so we'll see if it grows. I did go ahead and order my A5 cousin from the Hobonichi website. Uh, just a couple weeks ago and had it sent to my cousin in Indiana and she will bring it to me because we're meeting up in Orlando at the end of October. So she will bring that to me and I will um, switch it out, you know, towards the end of the year and I'll send this to her so she can keep it and archive it for me. But I will be switching to a pink cover for 2022. But I do enjoy this. This is my second full year of using the Hobonichi in this way for the tarot journal and I just really love it. So I've got those two. The other main planners that I've been using that also kind of double as some of my brainstorming notebooks are, I have this Kiki K Life is Wonderful planner. This is my like main planner, but I used to make this just nothing but planner. So this was just planner pages and so forth. But now it's actually sort of becoming also a type of brain dump for me. Like I'm making lists in here. I'm keeping um, notes about phone calls in here. I'm writing out meal plan stuff. I've got lots of little note pages that I've already used and archived in another binder that I have. So I feel like this has become kind of like a, a hybrid as well for me in that it's not just now my HB90 planner pages or my editorial calendar. It's also become basically a notebook or a catch-all for lists. So I think that's one of the things I love most about using an A5 binder for my planner is it's so flexible. So you can use it and just have planner pages in it for one month. And then the next month you can have journaling pages and other things like that. And I like that. The thing that I don't like about this in terms of notebook though is that you can take the pages out so then they don't necessarily stay in order or they don't become like a book the way this is where it gets nice and chunky you kind of have to move pages around and take them out if you want to keep using it but i will switch this out for a black planner that i brought that's also kiki k for the month of October, which I'm gonna get a little bit more like Halloween dressed up and that kind of thing in my planner. So I'm gonna planning to switch these out. So I'll use this one in November, the black one again in December and so on, um, and kind of switch those out. The other thing I've been using is this uh, B6 Gilio Apunto. This is the blush croc, I think is what it's called. And inside it, I have a B6 Stalogy. And this is something, I have wanted to use this size for a while and I really, really have been loving this. This is something else I've been using on a daily basis. And I did a video showing my setup of this planner. And again, it is, again, sort of like a hybrid between a planner and a notebook. So I have a future log here. I was trying this My Life in Pixels for my morning routine and I have not stuck with it. 
you can see I barely even did it like one day. So I don't know if I'm gonna just pull that page out or what, but for now, I'm not gonna be too hard on myself, but I have a future log that I've been keeping. I also have um, some weight loss stuff I've been keeping. I have some meal plan stuff in here and I have another place where I am tracking my tarot. So this is part of my morning routine journal and I've done pretty well. I've missed three, four days throughout the trip. So that's not too bad, but the, the evening routine is something that I have down pat it's like after my baby goes down well i call her baby she's two but after i put her down you know we have our specific very set nighttime routine i come in and i fill these two planners or journals out with this one though it's harder because i feel like unless i am able to wake up earlier than my daughter <laughs> I don't necessarily have a set time that I'm working on this. So if you are somebody who has like a really great morning routine with your kids, let me know how you find me time in the morning when you're trying to get kids ready for homeschool or any other things. I would love some tips, but I'm working on it and I feel like it's getting better. I just haven't quite perfected it yet, but you can kind of get a little bit of a idea of how I'm using this on the daily pages. So I have... I put an August calendar in here, but then I didn't really do it much in August. So I also have a September calendar. And these are calendars that I got from Hourglass Planners, I think, on Etsy. And I do have other ones here already cut and printed for October, November, December, and so on that I will be able to just glue in here. And this is just kind of an overview of when we're traveling and when we're moving. But then you can see um, as an idea, I've got... So, much, so many of these simply gilded sticker pages and vellums and things like that. So I never have used them because I usually just use the washi tape out of the simply gilded subscription box. So I have all of these simply gilded vellums and sticker sheets that I've gotten like over the past two years that I've been subscribed to that are being kept in this little bando. I guess a pen case or you know whatever pouch I guess as well as all my Hobonichi Weeks stickers and so what I've been doing is just going in and I'll pick out a couple because each sticker kit came with like two main stickers and then some of these smaller stickers and so I've just been using them along with the matching vellum to sort of decorate and I got this idea from Whoops I Did It Again Co. I really enjoy watching her videos about her B6 Stalogy and so I've been tracking like what I'm eating for the day and a little bit of like memories, like pool time, I went live from the Airbnb for the first time, or we had an egret right outside the fence, and then a little bit of journaling. So this is a little bit of a notebook planner hybrid, I guess you could say, because I am keeping track of things, but I'm also you know, keeping track of my daily tarot card or any kind of memories or things that we did for the day. And here and there, I am also putting in these tip-ins, which are just vellums that sort of match the sticker kits, which I think is really cute. and. I really have been enjoying this. I also was marking down things I went shopping for, <laughs> what came in, some beautiful photos of my kids came in. I also have been using this for, so you can see here I went, after we got here, I found out that I could actually buy an Xbox controller and play Xbox on my PC. So I was very excited about that. So I bought an Xbox controller and I started playing Resident Evil 7. And so I was making notes about things I found in the house <laughs> that I wanted to go back to like, oh yeah, I found this key, where does it go? And that sort of thing. So that was kind of fun. So I kept this little tab here and I have an entire, you'll see in my planner um, or stationary bag video, I have an entire bag full of like removable or movable tabs that I've been kind of moving around in the planner, but I also have some that are up here in the front. And I left myself a few pages for playing through that game. This has been some really good sort of me time in the evenings, I feel like, because life is so much chaos. It's been really important for me, not only to have fun time with the kids, but to have a little bit of time for myself or for George and I to have together because we're in much smaller quarters than what we usually have at our normal home. And the stress levels are a little bit raised to say the least. So it's been fun to kind of have something else to do. So I left a few pages for that. And then you can see just continuing on with some of these things. Now, I also have this little bow tab here from the Planner Society because I started taking a course called the PCOS Boss Academy. So shout out to anybody here in our Hardy's community who also has polycystic ovarian syndrome. I was diagnosed way back like 20 years ago, back when I was in college. And 
Although I have had some success in reversing some of my syndromes, if or some of my symptoms, if you have PCOS, you know that it's not curable condition. It is something you live with your whole life. And after having a baby, it has been really difficult for me to get back into the diet and nutrition I need to manage my symptoms. So I've been struggling with that a little bit. So I follow the women's dietitian on Instagram. I will link her stuff down below. And I really like what she has to say because it, a lot of what she says lines up. So I have been taking her course, PCOS Boss Academy. It's not open right now, but it, she does open it a couple times a year. And so far I've been just taking notes in here on what I've learned from the course. And some of it is going to be counting macros, which I'm a little bit nervous about. So if you have any tips on counting macros, like your carbs, um, protein, and what is the other thing? It's, it's carbs, protein, and I don't know, something else. I need to go back and look. And I, I need to come up with some meal plans and stuff like that. But you can see that I've left quite a bit of space in here for notes on that course. And that's one of the things that I really like about the B6 Stalogy. Now, similarly, I could have put those notes into here, but I just feel like Sometimes I'm kind of trying to try different systems, trying to try. I am trying out different systems, including the A5. But like I said, the problem with the A5 binder, if you're using it as a notebook, is that the pages don't stay together. So you would need some way that once you pull them out, you can kind of staple them together or keep them together. Otherwise, you end up with your notes kind of all over the place. And so for this, I knew I wanted to try to keep them all in one place where I could reference it with a little tab and get to it pretty easily. So I did leave some space to take notes for the rest of that course. But the biggest thing to really get moving with it is I need to sit down and figure out some meal plan, which means I need to figure out how to balance my like protein, carbs, and fat, I think it is. And that is going to be tough because I'm used to bright line eating where you just weigh your food, where you're not counting calories. So it's going to be a little bit of a mind flip for me, um, but I'm willing to give it some, some time. So Premier Pro notes also, I was kind of starting to make some notes on how to use Premier Pro because not only am I on the road, but because I usually do my um, my videos, I usually edit them on my Mac. I didn't bring a Mac with me because I don't have a Mac laptop. I could try to edit my videos on my iPad, but I'm a little bit nervous about that. So I already have the Adobe suite of, of stuff. So I've been using Adobe Premiere Pro to learn how to edit my videos. So if you see a little bit of changes in the editing or it's maybe doesn't have as many like slides or like, you know, different effects, it's because I'm just teaching myself a brand new editing software. So, you know, be kind. And then I've got still quite a bit left. So I think this will last me a long time. And I also do have in this front section that's been sectioned off reading notes and other things like that. So I'll keep you guys updated on how this Stalogy works out for me. I could really see that if I just wanted to go to a single thing where I tracked everything, this would be a really great system because it's basically kind of just like a bullet journal in a way. But with the stickers, instead of drawing everything in myself, like using stickers and uh, things that I can glue in, I think has been better than me trying to draw everything out and having that pressure of trying to make it kind of more artistic. So I really enjoy that and I think I will continue using it. Another notebook I brought with me is one you'll recognize, which is the one that I've been using to help manifest my TV deal. And I didn't want to leave it in the long-term storage because I'm so close to being done with it. Like literally you guys look at this one, two, three, four pages left and it's done. Cause I've been using it a little bit while we've been on the road and it's like, okay, my thought was whenever this is finished, maybe I will actually start moving forward on a TV deal for my Shadow Demon Saga. You never know. I have been keeping up with this for uh, over a year and a half now. So this first, um, one of these first ones was from February 23rd of 2020. So a year and a half, I've been slowly filling this out and doing some different like journaling and rituals and other things to try to daydream and be excited about my TV deal coming someday. So I have like three or four pages left in this. And what's funny is that now it's almost done. I feel like I almost don't want to fill it out because I'm like, oh my gosh, what if I finish it and it doesn't come true? And I'm like, no, that's the opposite of what you need to do to manifest. I need to just finish it out, say thank you. And then I think when I finish it, I'm obviously don't want to carry stuff in my 
bags when we have limited space that I can't keep. So I will just mail this to my cousin and she has a little section of her house that she has dedicated to all of our mail. So thank you, Kim, for keeping track of that stuff for us. But that one is almost finished. So I might actually finish a notebook while we're on the road. I also brought this Moleskine one that I was thinking of using. It's just a basic composition notebook. And I was thinking of using this for um, journaling, like plot notes and stuff like that. But I haven't yet chosen an exact reason for this, but I did bring it and it's been kind of hidden in my bag. I also brought this just because I don't have a purpose for this one either, but the reason I brought this one is because it is so cute. And I got a whole haul of stuff from Erin Condren right before I left that I didn't have time to record. So you guys will see some of that stuff popping up here. And actually right now, Erin Condren has 25% off their entire site. So that's all their planners, all their notebooks, all their like back to school stuff. And I think that's only going on maybe for a couple more days. So I would definitely check it out. I will leave you guys a link below, but the, they have so much more like Sanrio and Hello Kitty cute stuff. And so many of their notebooks don't have the stuff inside, like actual things written on the pages. They're just blank on inside. So I had to get this one that has the Hello Kitty and the Pochaco and Tuxedo Sam and Choco Cat and um, Kuropi and all of them, Bats Maroon. So I don't know how I'm going to use this yet, but I have a feeling that maybe once this notebook, which is similar, is finished, I will find a similar type of purpose for this, like journaling about maybe about our house and what I'm thinking about the places that we've gone so far. Like, do we want to live in Florida? Do we want to be back in South Carolina? Do we want to try new places? Um, so really kind of journaling about what type of house we would like, what type of, um, cause I kind of went through all this, like thinking about the house and then we lost it. And so there's some reason that I think we're on this journey and I meant to learn something on this journey. So I think I will use this notebook for that once this other one is finished. Another notebook sort of planner hybrid that I brought is this other Erin Condren and of course still the Hello Kitty cover and I also have this little Erin um, Condren like stacked, I don't know what you call that, like extra thing, I don't know, um, with its like charms or flair. But inside it has, I kind of Franken planned this, so I took just a coil, um, one of the smaller coils that came from one of the Daily Duos and I have what ends up being the last half of the year in the monthly planner. So this is just the monthly planner at the beginning. And what I've been doing here is just keeping track of, it's been my kind of brainstorm for everything that's going on with my live chats and what videos I'm gonna do, when's our virtual retreat. So this has been my sort of catch-all monthly thing. Uh, I could, again, keep that in my A5 binder, but this is, the process of so i for example i had to add or i decided to add a few extra videos to my publish and thrive course and so i did all of my video outlines in here and i find this to be super helpful to have the video outlines and we've got preptober coming up which i'm so excited let me know in the comments if you're planning on doing preptober and nanowrimo or if you're currently working on a book and looking for some guidance on that because i've got a few videos left coming up and then in the month of october i've already started planning planning out some of my Preptober content that will be coming out on this channel, as well as I'm going to be creating a few extra things that are going to go in the resource library that I'm really, really excited about. So I've been outlining all of that stuff in this like journal notebook here. And I find that just having a plain notebook is a really great place to outline my videos, make bullet points and sort of gather my thoughts about what I'm doing on social media and stuff. And originally I had planned on keeping this information in like all the editorial calendar stuff in my planner, my A5, but I just need more space. And like I mentioned before, I don't have just like a hundred pages of blank pages to put in there. So this just became a better option. Then I don't have the rest of the year. I only have 2021. I don't have 2022 in here. So if we end up still moving, you know, and we're still traveling when we get to the beginning of the year, I probably will put together another one of these and just Franken plan the first half of 2022. But the rest of this is just nothing but a notebook. And you can see here, I actually had started putting the Adobe Premiere Pro notes in here as well. And then I moved them into the A5 or the B6 Stalogy. So 
just it's kind of like the oh it's sort of like a monthly planner but I just gave myself only six months or five months and then a bunch of notebook pages here and I keep it inside this little binder here so these are my basic notebooks that I have on the road with me I do have another Erin Condra notebook that you might have seen in my um planner stuff as well as a uh, Archer and Olive Notebook, but I haven't started using those yet. So those haven't really come out of my storage locations very often. I also do have my iPad Pro with me and I have been using this for notes as well. So one of the cool things that I have been lately actually just setting up today as part of my work with Writing Retreat is I put my Plot Your Novel sheets into Good Notes. And so what I'm able to do with this is just a plain PDF. And what I'm able to do with this is I can take the pen tool and I can change the color if I want. So I can just make it black or if I wanted to make it purple for Harper, then I can change how thick I want the pen to be or anything like that. And I can just write on this and I can actually increase it so that it looks bigger. So I can just write on it without worrying so much about the handwriting and I can draw or write straight into these little sections here. And if I wanted to, I could even take some stickers. So I have, let's say, um, I have these sticker icons over here. If I wanted to take a little purple cup of coffee and put it into this plot your novel thing for Harper here, I could just paste it in and so this becomes a really fun digital notebook. I also do have some like washi tapes and stuff. So let's say, um, let's see if I can find a purple, kind of purple one. So let's say I wanted to take this little purple washi tape. I could go to share and then copy, and then I can go to plot your novel and I can paste it here and it becomes just like a little flare or something right there. I could also bring it down and then I could make it point to this one particular part if I wanted to. So there's a lot of stuff that you can do with a digital planner and all of these little um, stickers I got off of Etsy and just downloaded them onto my iPad. And this is of course just my plain PDF that you guys can get when you sign up for my newsletter and you just import it. So when you download it, you can say open with good notes and good notes five, I think is the app that I have on my iPad. If you're on just a regular tablet, I think you can use OneNote or some other um, sort of Windows based ones. But see here, I could go ahead, I could put that same piece of washi tape over here. And I could say, you know, here's her goal and put it like this. I mean, you can do just about anything you want with it. I could also take it and make it bigger and <laughs> send it across the page like that. Of course, then it starts to get kind of pixelated. But um, I think that there's some really cool stuff that you can do with digital stickers and things like that. And then you can go in and make the whole page bigger so that you can write in it. And I could actually use this little, sometimes I use the highlighter tool and let's do it pink and I will just make it big and I will do like this and I'll just tap on it two or three times. And now it looks like a little sticker, like a little bullet point sticker. And then I can go in and I can say, you know, her outer, uh, motivation or her outer goal is to blah, blah, blah. And I can write on it. And what's cool too, is that then I can, if I change my mind about it, I can go in, whoops. If I change my mind about it, I can go in and just delete it by using the eraser tool. And this is a cool way to fill this out. So what I plan to do is I can re-import this, you know, as many times as I want, or I can copy the pages. So I'm planning to fill this out for each of my POV uh, characters for my Shadow Demon Saga and just use this instead of my planner, um, plotting planner that I usually use. So that's one thing I'm using. The other thing that I'm using on here is OneNote. And I spent some time this morning setting it up just kind of playing around with whether or not I could use OneNote effectively as a series Bible. And of course, I'm not going to reset up my entire series Bible for the Shadow Demon Saga because I have this in a wiki and it would take me like probably a year <laughs> to get this all switched over. But what I am doing is I'm currently making my way through the entire Shadow Demon Saga because I'm working on the final book, which is book 12. And so what I'm doing is I'm taking notes in here 
on OneNote for each of the books, the story threads, the character arcs, any type of little things that I want to come back around like plants and reveals and just keeping them in notes. And then you can go to search and you can search for you know, a character's name or an instance of a certain word being used. But this is cool because I can actually use OneNote not only on my iPad, but I can use it on my phone and I can also use it on my PC computer, which is something I can't do with GoodNotes. So I'm giving it a shot. If you use OneNote or have some good resources on using OneNote for taking notes or for a series Bible, let me know in the comments, but I will update you guys on this. And if it ends up working really well for me, I will definitely do a full video walkthrough of how to use OneNote for your digital notebooks. But I also am using several things. <laughs> I also am using OneNote for many things like my um, current vision board and different things like that. I really love how you can basically take notes inside GoodNotes with all of these stickers and you can add images and you can add different fonts and different things like this. So here again, there's just an example of using the highlighter tool to make little bullet points. And I just think this is a cool uh, tool to use as a notebook when you don't have a lot of space. So I already have brought like more notebooks than I probably should have in terms of our family's space. But at the same time, this like GoodNotes app and the iPad or any kind of tablet really with a pencil allows you to carry like infinite number of notebooks with you wherever you go. So I've really, really enjoyed that. If you guys would like to see a more in-depth tutorial on how I'm using this as a notebook, let me know. I would love to know how many of you have iPads or how many of you are like, oh, I don't really want an iPad specific video because I don't have one. Um, or if you'd enjoy watching it, even if you don't have it. So let me know in the comments. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up as well. Also for my Diverse Reads, we are going to go back to a series that I've already mentioned before, one of our first Diverse Reads on this channel, which was uh, Alexis Daria's Primas of Power series. Her second book in that series, A Lot Like Adios, has just come out. So I'm going to leave a link to that book and the description down below for you. Congrats on your new release, Alexis. I am planning to go and find a Barnes & Noble here so that I can get it in paperback if I can. If not, I'm going to just go grab it on my Kindle. But congratulations on that. Really, really loved the first book in that series. You had me at Ola, and I think that you guys will love this one just as much. I know that I will. As always, if you guys have any other diverse reads that you would like or any books that you've been reading lately, or if you're an author and a member of our community and you have a new release, feel free to let us know about it down below um, or let us know about it in the on Instagram. We have been using the hashtag HB Notebook Challenge. If you want to let us know about your new release over there, we would love to see about it. And I want to see your notebook stacks and how they're going for the year. I can't believe we're already almost into Q4 and the last few months of the year. So this is going to be crazy. So I also do not have a giveaway notebook with me here on the road. So what I'm going to do instead is I will be giving away a $30 Amazon gift card. So as long as you are in a country that is able to accept an Amazon gift card digitally, you are welcome to enter. All you have to do is comment down below, make sure you're subscribed and please, please, please hit that thumbs up button to let YouTube know that you enjoyed this video. All right, you guys, thank you so much. This is our first official HP notebook challenge on the road, and you're going to see these particular notebooks over and over again. So you will be seeing them fill up. I hope that you're going to enjoy that. And maybe I'll buy a few new notebooks along the way. I'm definitely not going to rule it out. Thank you so much for being here. And we will start our Preptober and getting ready for nano content pretty soon, along with some videos about how to not only choose which book you're going to write, but how to stick with it once you've made your choice. <laughs> All right, you guys, I will see you in my next video. Bye. Mm.